Hi, I'm Richard from Drive Green, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Mustang Mach E, Ford's first fully electric car. Ford, like most manufacturers, have got big plans about electrifying their full range of cars. However, they've chosen to start with quite a niche car, you know, bearing their sort of performance uh, mark of the Mustang. And I'm really looking forward to this, and who wouldn't be you know, getting to drive a, a Mustang? I just hope the electric Mustang lives up to the expectations that the name creates. Launched early 2021 here in the UK, it's still a very recent entrant into the market. And whilst it's unlikely to topple test from their throne, it does hint towards a very exciting future from the Ford brand. Whether that's Ford in general, or more amazing and exciting cars bearing the Mustang name. At Star Wise, the Mackie isn't quite what I was expecting. I had imagined it being quite a low slung, fast back muscle car, whereas in fact, we've got a crossover SUV. It may not be quite what I expected, but it's definitely a good looking car with a real presence. And there are the Mustang touches like the rear lights and of course that horse motif. That's not to say it's not a masculine looking car because it is. It's big and meaty, serious and powerful looking. It's definitely a handsome looking car and it has that look that says it can trample over most EVs out there. One thing I'm not quite so sure about is these little buttons instead of door handles. Um, gives you nice clean lines down the car, however when you add on this funny little handle belt, I think it's a bit odd. Only a minor thing and actually you still can't get away from what a nice stylized car this is. One advantage of the Mustang's crossover SUV styling is its size and practicality. It's a big car with lots of space inside, a large boot, and it even has a front to offer extra load space in the front of the car. There's plenty of room in the front, there's lots of leg room in the rear, and there's more than ample headroom in the back as well. In terms of the interior, I think Ford have done quite a nice job. Um, there's some quite nice materials, there's some nice detailing like the, the fabric on the dash and this kind of carbon fibre style effect here. And of course you've got this lovely big nice touch screen, which is great. Uh, it, it controls most of the car from this. Um, you've got a few steering wheel controls as well, which is good. And you've got this lovely nice, uh, rather intricate sort of dial on the front of it, which is quite clever. You know, it's got a nice menu system, it's quite easy to use. The icons are nice and big, so actually you can use it while you're driving. Um, it's actually a really nice system, I do like it. Uh, one thing I don't think I'll ever tire of is seeing this Mustang motif in the centre of the steering wheel. It really does remind me that I am in rather a special car. You know, it may not be fully premium, but I do like this interior. Uh, and I would say it's pretty much on par with, you know, the interior of the Tesla Model 3, for example, or even the Polestar. Now the car's available in two battery sizes. You've got the standard range and the extended range. It also comes in rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive format, so all of which giving a, a variety of performance figures. Starting with the, the standard range, that comes with a 68 kilowatt hour battery, which is going to deliver, you know, around about sort of 240 to maybe sort of 250 miles of driving range. Uh, Ford would certainly argue that that's probably more like about 270. However, you do have to remember this is a big, heavy car and it's a Mustang, so it kind of favours being driven quite hard rather than being driven quite soft. So I think in the interest of managing expectations, um, I, would, uh, I would sort of pitch the, the range of being close to the 240, 250 mark. In terms of 0 to 60 time, uh, the rear wheel drive model will do that in 6.9 seconds. Um, it does feel nice and quick, uh, and it is quick, however, compared to a lot of modern EVs, it's nothing particularly startling. Like I say, it does, however, feel fast. Uh, once you go up to the all-wheel drive model, um, that goes down to 6.3 seconds, and at the expense of about sort of 10 miles worth of driving range. The extended range model comes with an 88 kilowatt hour battery, and that delivers about sort of 300 miles of driving range. Uh, again, Ford would argue that's probably more like 370, but I think in order to manage expectations being realistic, I think about 300. And to be fair, 300 is still loads of range. Um, acceleration wise, the rear wheel drive model will do seven seconds. Uh, but when you go up to the all-wheel drive model, that goes all the way down to 5.8, which is nice and quick. So if range is more important, go for the rear-wheel drive models. But if you like the aggressive and fast Mustang drive, then go for the all-wheel drive version. And if you want your Mustang to be like a wild beast, there is now the GT version. Um, it's got the 88 kilowatt hour battery, and obviously it's the all-wheel drive. Uh, however, it does 0 to 60 in a ferocious 3.7 seconds, which is incredibly fast. Obviously it's a more expensive car, 
however, that being said, uh, at, at under 70 grand, to get a 3.7 second car, I think still represents great value. At the other end of the scale, the standard rear wheel drive models cost barely over 40 grand, which I think is great value for a car of this quality, practicality and range, especially with that Mustang badge on the front. Uh, Drive-wise, I've really enjoyed this. Um, it, it really does actually feel like a, an electric muscle car. You know, it's very imposing, very big, it's very heavy and you feel, it feels very powerful. Uh, it handles very well, corners great, despite being quite a sort of high-riding sort of SUV kind of poise. It, you know, it, it, it genuinely is an enjoyable car to drive. You've got a few different drive settings. You know, all the way up to uh, the untamed setting, which is kind of like the sports setting, which is the one I've been driving in most of the time, as I imagine most Mustang drivers would. It's got some uh, different uh, regen settings. So you've got a standard, a standard setting, which is actually quite light on the regen, uh, and then you've got a uh, one-pedal driving mode, which does pretty much what it says. And actually, I think that's my, my preferred drive style, I think, although it's a little bit fiercer than I would normally like. You know, it'd be nice to have a little bit more adjustability, actually, but in reality, that's okay, you know, and as you're only V, yeah, you'll get used to it and you'll certainly enjoy that. It also has a, a sound generator they call propulsion sound. So when you really put your foot down, you get this uh, Mustang roar, which I think is great. Uh, it really adds a certain level of connection with the car uh, and what's going on uh, under the bonnet, or rather in this case, in the rear of the car. Uh, although it's just a sound, I think it does create that extra connection. Uh, and when you add that together with how this car actually feels, the sound combined with that power, I think you, you do get that feeling you are driving an electric muscle car. In terms of equipment, if you're looking to buy a, a, a Mackie now, um, Ford have opted to have a, a very, very high standard spec, which has pretty much everything in it, and, and well, nothing really in terms of options. Uh, but as standard, you know, it is a high spec car, and this does include uh, memory seats, motorised seats, you've got wireless charging, over the air updates, heated steering wheel, heated seats, adaptive cruise control with lane assist. A park assist function with a 360 degree camera, uh, puddle lights that display the Mustang logo, alloy wheels. You know, it's a decent high spec car and it isn't missing much at all. The all wheel drive models, however, they do come with uh, red brake calipers, bigger 19 inch wheels, and a Bang & Olufsen sound system, which I can testify is actually a really, really good sound system. Then when you go all the way up to the GT, you get bigger 20 inch wheels, you get performance brakes, sports seats, and you get the option of a pan roof. If you're looking at a slightly earlier Mackie and you're looking at one in the used market, the, the spec arrangement is slightly different. The standard spec was lower uh, and a tech pack was available. Um, this tech pack included uh, the motorised tailgate, um, the adaptive cruise and the lane assist, um, the park assist and the 360 degree camera system, uh, and the pan roof as well. Uh, the Mustang's also capable of 150 kilowatt charging, uh, yeah, which is great because that means uh, you know in about 30 to 45 minutes you can more or less fully charge the car, which obviously is great if you can find a 150 kilowatt hour charger. Obviously the 150s and 100s are a little bit fewer and far between, most still sitting at 50 kilowatts. However, it's nice to know that you've got a car that can accept these higher rates of charge if you're lucky enough to find yourself the right charge point. So where does the Mach-E fit in amongst other EVs and who is it right for? Uh, we'll start off with it surprisingly practical uh, and actually on that basis is a car that can suit most people's needs. Uh, it's also reasonably priced at the bottom end so as long as you've got a, you know, a kind of a 40 grand plus budget you know, it's definitely worth the car contemplating and it will suit most people. Also I think it's quite a contender within the premium space. If you compare it, say, to the Mercedes EQC or the Audi e-tron, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, it's certainly a much more exciting car. It has the same sort of level of practicality and size, although you could argue its interior is, you know, a, a slightly more down market. I think the car where the Mackie is most easily compared to is, the, is actually the Jaguar I-Pace. Similar sort of size uh, and, you know, an incredibly good drive, you know, a real good performance car. 
However, the Mach-E is cheaper, but I think between the two of them, they both deliver the same sort of driving thrills. Uh, and I would definitely argue that the Mustang brand is kind of the cooler of the two. But overall, the, the, the Mach-E is a great car, you know, and it definitely is a real contender in the over 40 grand EV space. Uh, and it, it can it hold its own, I think, amongst a lot of the premium EVs as well. Uh, I genuinely have really enjoyed driving this car and I am actually really impressed. So I certainly urge you to take a look at it and consider it alongside any other sort of fairly top end EVs that you're looking at at the moment. If you're looking for a practical, long range EV with good looks, a real presence and sports car like performance, then I think it's definitely worth having a look at the Mustang Mach-E. I hope this video has been useful in helping you find out a little bit more about the Mustang Mach-E. If you'd like to find out more or you'd like to arrange a test drive, please do get in touch. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please be sure to check out our other EV review videos on our YouTube channel and hopefully we can help you find the right EV for you.